impose the LTNs on them without prior consultation nor a proper impact study. To many, they appeared out of nowhere, and while they were in place, the main topic of conversation in most Tooting households who exchanged horror stories of blocked roads, large traffic jams, stuck emergency vehicles, increased pollution, and the disabled who couldn't get out and about anymore. It was obvious to the vast majority of residents that the LTNs were a major mistake, and credits to one to a council, they listened and promptly removed them. So, the main lesson we must learn is that we must never ever embark on significant changes again without first having conducted a comprehensive consultation with residents, an impact study, and we are absolutely sure that the vast majority of local residents actually want what's being proposed. Our residents are intelligent and know what is best for themselves and their families. Mm -hmm. Had the residents known about the road changes beforehand, as experts and key stakeholders in their own localities, they would have been very quickly pointed out, uh, and that, uh, very quickly pointed out that the proposed LTNs were unworkable, rejected them, and saved us a lot of time, money, and heartache. Another lesson to be learned was that if you mess around and block roads, someone else is, will suffer the consequences, the butterfly effect personified. Let's be neighbourly and think of our neighbours when making such requests in the future. Um, as a council, we are not and should not be anti-car or anti-other vehicle type. To many residents and businesses, the car is an essential form of transport. We should respect the fact that residents are intelligent people and they can best decide for themselves how they want to live their lives. As a council, our job is to give them options and choices. Many of you will note the petition also makes reference to the Mayor for London TfL's business killing road blockages along the A24 through Ballam and Tooting town centres. It is clear that TfL have not listened to local residents. These changes remain despite numerous meetings and emails from residents to TfL and also Wandsworth demand these barricades be removed. TfL's poorly designed road changes have caused increased pollution with traffic jams, emergency vehicles frequently getting stuck with few places to pass. The blocking of the roads, the removal of the disabled and loading parking bays have caused untold harm to residents and local businesses. If you get a chance, take a look at some of the videos that the One Wandsworth team have produced of local business owners and you'll see firsthand the pain and the harm that the A24 road changes are causing. TfL impose these changes without consultation nor a proper impact study and they are still there. The ugly blue barriers, the bus stops in the middle of the road whereby residents need to cross a cycle lane to get to the bus stop which doesn't have a shelter from the rain. The no left turns which means that many residents have to drive further to get home. The list goes on. So from the residents and petitioners point of view, the battle is still not over, while the TfL A24 road blockages and changes are still in place. Many residents are livid that their local councillors along the A24 road in Bedford, Tooting and Gravely Wards are not helping them, and the GLA member has her head in the sand. They have also still not apologised for their part in creating the LTL and LTNs in their wards in the first place. So, Madam Mayor, the council has stood by local residents and done its duty, and now it's down to TfL and the Mayor for London to follow suit.